Greetings to all the viewers at home. My name is Monatin Gumbela and I am a second year BA Humanity student. I am also a member of the United Nations Associations of South Africa, UNESCO Stellenbosch, under the Human Rights Subcommittee portfolio. Safety and security is an essential feature for all human beings. Higher education institutions in particular have experienced issues that puts the lives of our students at risk. A few amongst these issues is firstly, drinking culture in university residences, which leads to offenses of sexual abuse. Secondly, the raging masculinity amongst males, which becomes the breeding grounds for gender-based violence. Thirdly, the unsecure schooling environment which puts the lives of students at risk. My name is Leona Marewangepo. I am a first year BCom actual science student and a member of UNASA Stellenbosch Chapter's Human Rights Subcommittee. In light of our current socio-economic climate that has been devastatingly impacted by COVID-19, the effects on the safety and security of our households and communities cannot be overlooked. The lockdown has shed light on the effects on the emotional, psychological and physical security of the youth in high-risk areas. The truth is we're not just facing a medical crisis, but we're facing a social predicament that may have far reaching consequences on the education and development of the youth, as well as the well-being of every single person who is either directly or indirectly impacted by this pandemic. It is for this reason that we have chosen specifically to shed light on safety and security concerns and what this means for the right to the access of education. In developing our topic, we have chosen to inform as well as to raise awareness on the current perpetuation of crime-related dangers as well as abuse during this lockdown period. We've also aimed to provide emergency helplines as well as steps that can be taken by individuals who are in dangerous environments or know of people who are in situations where their safety and security has been compromised. The lockdown has seen a rise in conflicts between and within households and communities. We're going to take a closer look at what this means to the right of safety and security. Our aim is focused on higher education institution students specifically to raise consciousness of the acts that contribute safety and security. While doing this, we also aim to highlight Stellenbosch University's response towards the gender-based violence movement's call for reformation. We'll also be having a gender-based violence activist, Tandile Nkwe, to tell us more about this and also how safety and security can further be improved in order to ensure a safe space where students can grow and reach their full potential. A safe and secure schooling environment is a requirement according to Section 24 and 28 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa. The National School Safety Framework was developed for provincial and district officials responsible for the safety and security to manage risk and threats of violence in and around schools. It is possible for effective learning to take place in a safe and secure schooling environment. Creating a safe and secure school environment entails ensuring that school buildings are safe through regular maintenance and repairs. A safe and secure schooling environment will lead to low risk of physical, emotional and psychological injuries to its occupants. The COVID-19 pandemic has had and will undoubtedly continue to have a significant impact on crime and public safety, both in the short and longer term. 
Members of the youth living in high-risk areas could face concerns about safety and security threats due to heightened crime during this lockdown. The crimes that have become prevalent through this lockdown have been residential burglaries, store break-ins, especially with a increasing scarcity of resources as well as the alcohol and cigarette bans. Gangs and crime syndicates, which were initially disrupted, have um, begun to adjust as well as to re-establish their crime networks. Illegal networks have also stepped in to supply demand for alcohol and cigarettes after the ban was announced. Systematic corruption in the police, weak crime intelligence, and a lack of accountable leadership in law enforcement has caused fear and unnecessary stress to students living in high-risk areas. There is already increased pressure from the education department for students to use this time to be productive, but it is difficult to do so when fearing for one's physical security in an already traumatic time. There needs to be real recognition of the need for collective work to be done by public, private and civil society sectors to bring a much needed reform of the criminal justice system. The core issues that affect safety and security in higher education institutions is violence. Violence including gender-based violence and any other form of violence drug use or drug abuse, and sexual harassment. The theoretical and empirical distinctions of gender-based violence in higher education institutions can be characterized by two distinctions, contact and non-contact sexual offenses. Drinking culture in higher education institutions increases the risk of sexual violence to occur. The impact of gender-based violence in higher education institutions leads to emotional and psychological consequences to gender-based violence victims. The recent upward trend in domestic abuse cases is a definite threat to the living and learning spaces of those having to face this abuse. Where before the lockdown, retreating to a safe environment would have been plausible, the lockdown has trapped abusers and victims in a common living space. Emotional, psychological and physical abuse has been perpetuated by the lockdown as a result of the following. A pre-existing culture of violence and a toxic mix of poverty, inequality and unemployment. Primary and secondary trauma and frustration being faced by many individuals as their lives have been drastically disrupted by this pandemic. A lack of healthy coping mechanisms and stress relief. Pre-existing mental health issues. And all of this has been exacerbated by alcohol and drug use or lack thereof due to the ban on alcohol in the duration of the lockdown. The reality is that restricting public movement and alcohol consumption can reduce certain types of crime and violence, but increase others. Being forced indoors for an indefinite period has began to flare tensions within and between households. The National Gender-Based Violence Command Center said they'd received triple the usual number of calls just during this lockdown period. South African Police Service had received 2,320 complaints of gender-based violence during just the first week of the lockdown. So there's definitely a call to stop gender-based violence. As we have stated that we will also have a gender-based violence movement activist Tandile Ngwe to answer a question for us. Now the question we'll be posing to Tandile Ngwe is how has a call of the gender-based violence movement, GBV movement, at Stellenbosch University through the proposed memorandums been met by the university? And what further safety and security measures can be applied to ensure a safe 
and secure learning environment for all students. Hi everyone, um, my name is Utandile Ngukwe and I will be speaking on the matter of safety and security pertaining to gender-based violence on our campuses. Now just to give a little bit of context to everyone, um, during the nationwide protest against gender-based violence, um, after hearing the death of Oyenene, may her soul rest in peace, um, as Stellenbosch University students and members of the anti-gender based violence movement, we issued out um, a memorandum to the rectorate on the 18th of September 2019. And under the provision safety and security, we had um, these demands. Now I'm going to give some clarity on which demands were met and which demands are in progress and which demands in which I cannot fully speak on as of yet because of our current predicament. Now, the screening of security personnel was a very important one. Um, in the sense that we just wanted assurance as to the people that are there for our safety or people that have never inflicted violence um, onto other people or who might have the potential of doing anything of that nature. So that was something which we were assured that um, campus security personnel do get screened before they get hired. Um, another one is the identification of security personnel. Um, all security um, personnel now have I, an identity number on, on them to make sure that we can keep people accountable because we not, don't necessarily know them by name. So that's another win for us. Um, a matter I can't speak on, on now is the is test concerns, um, of escorts and the patrol on Merriman Street. Reason being, I personally have not heard of any um, problems in terms of escorts, nor of any patrols on Merriman Street. So that's something I can't speak on. Um, with test concerns, um, we given our current predicament and um, the university's test policy, that was something that was still being on the table in terms of how we can overcome. On the matter of the increase of security staff, um, camp our campus is rather big and has a lot of open spaces where perpetrators might hide. So it is very important for us to increase um, security um, on our campuses and to ensure that those areas um, are covered as well to ensure that not only the students but the greater community is safe at um, all times. Um, the issue of um, street lights. Last I heard we were waiting on the municipality to confirm as to what they are willing to do in that regard and on the matter of self-defense classes and self-defense equipment that was something that was still in um, conversation I think but it was something that I have not heard word on. Um, all in all those are the that is the clarification or rather the update as to um, the demands that were met by the Richard and some of the things in which we are still still in conversation with Richard with. Um, I know they are main, they are working groups in terms of ensuring that the memorandum demands are being worked on. Um, that's it all from me and thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you very much to Tandile for providing a very informative perspective on the actions that have in the past and um, will in the future continue to be taken by um, Stellenbosch University as a higher education institution. It is of utmost importance to be aware of emergency contact details, not only for those who find themselves in dangerous environments, but for those who know of people who may be in compromising situations. 
The following contact details are available for GBV victims as well as victims of other forms of abuse. The following contact details are provided by the Gender-Based Violence Command Center. You may call the emergency line at 0800-428-428. There is also a Please Call Me service that is supported by a USSD. That is star 120 star 7867 hash. Victims may also use the Skype address help me GBV. This is for members of the deaf community. And there is also an SMS line available. SMS help to 31531 for persons with disability. Other available emergency contact details are the National Emergency Response at 10177, the South African Police Service at 10111, the Ambulance Service 10177, Childline South Africa 011-452-4110, People opposed to women abuse, that is at 081-383-7698 and Lifeline South Africa at 082-231-0805. It is important to recognize the vital role that social workers are playing, especially in the frontline response teams for the emergency lines that have been before mentioned. Social workers are important during this lockdown in order to address the psychosocial needs of students that are at risk. Social workers initially have not been declared as an essential service during this lockdown, but there is an absolute need for a coordinated, well-planned strategy from the Department of Social Development in order to deploy resources through social service workers. The following contact detail may be noted in order to contact the Department of Social Development and the number is 0800-220-250 and this can be reached for access to the following services residential facilities for persons with disabilities youth development services child and youth care centers shelters for victims of violence and children and family services to sum up due to the nature of the national lockdown it has further expounded on pre-existing issues that affect safety and security. Specifically, the right to a safe and secure learning environment is now under threat more than ever. Furthermore, we have also noticed that the right to education and a safe and secure learning environment are both inseparable as one influences the other. This is evident from the fact that a safe and secure learning environment will create a space where students can grow, excel, and reach their full potential. This is why we call upon the youth to act and reach out to the relevant health emergency institutions as stated by Leona, if they feel that their safety and security has been compromised. Thank you so much for viewing our video. In a time like this, informing and educating can be so important because it places into context the truth of many people's current realities. We hope that you have taken something useful and informative and we urge you to carry on raising awareness and remaining mindful of the impacts that COVID-19 has had and will continue to have on not only the right to a safe and secure environment, but also the right to education. We also urge you to continue to interact with us in the comment section and hopefully we can keep the conversation going. We wish you well and we hope that you remain safe during this period of lockdown.